Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Ceph, RGV, Rados, Gateway and using SSL. I'm excited to tell you that I partnered up with Code Combat to bring your kid a learning opportunity. Back in my day, there were no one that could tutor me. I knew more than the teachers and I had to put in the work because there were no other option. Unlock your child's coding potential with Code Combat's live online classes. The classes are led by experts who make learning an exciting and rewarding experience. With their help, your child will work through coding challenges and feel proud of their accomplishments. Personal attention and a structured curriculum will help your child become a confident coder. I always said that I hope that you learned something today and now your kid can. Follow the link in the description and enter the promo code EXPLORER10 at checkout for a 10% discount and all subscriptions have a 30 day money back guarantee. And in order to use SSL, we need, of course, a certificate. We need to install it on our server and we need it to get to run in Ceph. But there is another way to do this. As we have RGB gateways and we will have multiple of them, a better way might be to just have an, a firewall in front of it or something, some kind of load balancer and you can take your SSL certificate and terminate it there and then pull the traffic back to your instance. Because if you create a uh, certificate for this specific gateway and you're not using a star certificate, then you need one for each of them because they will have different names. But there is a bunch of different ways of doing this. So I'm gonna show you how to do it in Ceph with a certificate. So if we switch over to my screen here, here we can see that run this test script over SSL and it just works, no problems there. So we start from there and now we're gonna start creating an SSL certificate. So this is the script that I use. First off, we will create our root certificate authority and that is just an RSA key that we generate up here with 258 bits. So we have this root key up here. After that, we need to create the certificate for the root authority. So we create a request here that could either create certificates or certificate requests. And in this case, we say that we want a certificate, the standard the default setup here. We want a new one, we want nodes, which means that the key that's gonna be generated here will not be encrypted. And then we have the key that we created earlier. A SHA-256 will be the hashing algorithm that is used. It will have 200, 1,024 1, days of um, availability, so it will be valid for that time. And then we will put that into the root CI PIM. And that is our certificate. So now we have a root key and a root certificate. And then we need to create our actual server certificate that we're gonna sign with the root certificate. So we create a request here, new one. We want a new key as well. It's gonna be an RSA, 256 bits with a SHA-256 hash. We don't want to encrypt that either. And we want to put out a key. So these that we have here, new key until here, is actually one kind of operation, creating a key. But with OpenSSL, you can do both of these operations at the same time. So the next operation we want to now do now is create a new certificate request. And for that, we need a subject here. And the subject is telling us what is this key created for. So in this case, it's created for the country Sweden. It has no state, no location. And location here could be... Uh, locality, I think is the actual pronoun here. And that could be a city, for instance. Then we have an organization, I put none there. And then we have the actual common name, which should be the server name. So this server is called Ceph Single EA Org, for instance. And then we put that out to a server certificate request. So that is what we need to sign with the root certificate. So the signing operation we have here, it's gonna use this extension file v3, which we see down here. And because of uh, some um, requirements in the Chrome browser, we have alt names of DNS down here, and the subject alt name should be alt name, so that those are the links down here. The key usage should be used for digital signature, run reputation, key encipherment, and key data encipherment. So we need to 
uh, sign and also encrypt things with this key. We don't want uh, the basic constraint that this should be a certificate authority, of course, but because this is a server key, and then it should be identified by the key ID and the issuer. So we take OpenSSL up here, we will create a certificate here. The request uh, is in here. So this is the server request that we put in. The CA is the certificate of the root certificate authority over here. We need to use the root certificate key as well. We can't sign anything with a, without the private key. We want to create a totally random serial for this key. And then we want an out file here as a certificate. It should be valid for 1024 days. We had this um, SHA-256 as our, our hash again. So that is creating this server certificate. What we want to do now is take three components from this. We want to take the server key, the server certificate, and the root certificate that we have created here. And we want to put those into one file in order to have the full key a certificate chain plus the actual server key so we could uh, sign messages and encrypt decrypt things from the server end. Uh, so if you are from a client, you will encrypt with the certificate and the server can decrypt it with its private key. And on the other hand, the server could encrypt with its private key and send over to the certificate of the client. So if we look then at this key file here, we have first off the private key that we was talking about, the server private key. Then I put the certificate for the server. And then last but not least, I put the certificate for the root uh, authority. And you can put them in any order, but they need to be all there. Now we can set up the actual server that we want to talk to and depending on if we are using Ceph admin or if we are installing manually there is two different ways of doing this so let's look at Ceph admin first so if we go to the interface here we go to the cluster we go down to um, our services and in the service list here we have our rgv service we can edit that and under here we check the check mark ssl we set the port for our SSL certificate, our SSL connection, and then we put in the key and all the key information material down here. So everything just copy paste over here, or we can choose the file and then we edit the service. And that is how we set it up with this. Because of the requirement to have different names, if we don't have a star certificate, we will need to have the placement as host and then choose a specific host with a specific name and then put in a key for each of these. So that, that's why it makes it a little bit more cumbersome if you just want to have one name of your service and if you have certificates, you need to have multiple certificates. And if we go over to our uh, console here and look at the Ceph single. So first off, we need to put this key, I called it full PEM here, in our etc Ceph directory. We could put it somewhere else in the etc directory. You can't put it under home directory or root directory or anything like that. It needs to be in somewhere where uh, the um, service can read it. So the Ceph uh, etc directory seems like a good place. If we look at the Ceph configuration file here, we need to, in the RGV setup down here, create another front end. So the front end we used before was just beast, endpoint, and a port number. And the front end we have set up here is beast, and then we can keep this endpoint if we want. Then we want an SSL endpoint with a specific port, and then we put in the SSL certificate uh, with the specific path. And you could use SSL certificate and SSL private key, but if you're only using the SSL certificate, it will look for all the information in that file. Then we need to restart the service and it should just work for us. If we look at the PHP client that I wrote earlier, we need to set up a bunch of things here, of course. We need to set up the port, the host address, and the host address needs to be 
the actual address that is mentioned in the uh, in the cert file so having a dns that can actually give these kind of names is of course important for a production deployment then here i also created the cert file so i can use that in my client if we look at the client i have just added one section more here so the cert file is read into the object as uh, as a member in the object uh, named cert file and then I create this little extra section to the stream context create SSL cert file verify peer and verify name. So if you put that in it will run over HTTPS and work just fine with your cert file. So that's everything that we need to set up in here. If you have a server that you haven't created the key for yourself and you want to connect over SSL, I wanted to figure out how to do that in a good way as well, of course. So I found this command on online where you can uh, first echo quit for some reason to open SSL. I guess it's not doing that kind of operation when you run this command for some reason. Uh, but you run OpenSSL with S client, show search, uh, search, and then server name and the name of the server that you want to fetch, and then connect to the specific uh, port and host that you want to connect, and then you can pipe that out to a search PEM file. That will give you both the search, of course, but also some information around the search that will be ignored with from the client that will only read in the cert por por uh, por portions of this information. But if you're running that, you will get the server certificate and the root certificate that you need to have in order to do this kind of communication. So, and if you have like say a root certificate authority that is signing another authority that is signing another authority then signing your server, then you will get the full chain. So the port important part is that you have a full chain that could be verified all the way down to the root. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.